In this video, I'm going to be showing you a Salesforce Apex overview. So Salesforce Apex or Salesforce native programming language used to build custom functionality within the Salesforce platform. So if you're new to Apex or looking to enhance your Salesforce development skills, this video will provide a clear introduction to its capabilities, structure, and how to get started with your Apex. So first, what is Salesforce Apex? So Apex is a strongly typed, object-oriented programming language that is similar to Java and is specifically designed to work within Salesforce multi-tenant environment. It allows developers to execute flow and transaction control statements on the Salesforce platform and build custom business logic that can run on the Salesforce servers. So Apex is integral to Salesforce development as it can first automate complex business processes by defining triggers, classes, and custom logic. Also, it can interact with Salesforce data by using SOQL or Salesforce object query language to query, insert, update, and delete records. Another one is it integrate external systems with Salesforce by calling external web services. So now welcome to this introductory session on Salesforce Apex programming. So the agenda for this video is first of course, the overview of Salesforce Apex, which is the introduction to Apex, its purpose and importance in Salesforce. We will also talk about the key features and syntax. So we're going to explore the main features of Apex and its programming syntax. We will also talk about setting up the development environment, the core concepts, which is the data types and control structures. We will also talk about simple Apex code snippets, the industry trends and adoption rates, the common challenges for beginners, and resources for further learning. So an overview of the Salesforce Apex is Salesforce Apex is a strongly typed language. So Apex enforces strict data types, enhancing code reliability and reducing errors. It is also object-oriented design, which means Apex uses object-oriented principles, allowing for reusable code and easier management of complex system. Another good thing about this, it's integrated with Salesforce. So it seamlessly integrates with Salesforce data enabling direct manipulation of data and business processes. Also, it has flow control statements, which means developers can execute flow control statements to manage the execution sequence within applications. It also has complex business processes designed to handle intricate business logic, making it suitable for various enterprise applications. So now for the key features and syntax. Uh, first is its object-oriented programming. Its Apex supports uh, object-oriented programming principles enabling modular and reusable code. And again, it is a strongly typed language. So Apex enforces strict data types, reducing runtime errors and improving code reliability. And again, uh, seamless uh, Salesforce integration. So it enhanced the platform's uh, capabilities, also has built-in support for DML operations, which provides direct support for DML operations, simplifying database interactions. And its syntax is similar to Java, making it easier for Java developers to transition to Apex programming. So setting up the development environment. So the first thing you want to do is install the Salesforce CLI and developer console to interact effectively with Salesforce. Next is gain access to a Salesforce org and configure it to suit your development needs. 
Next is to navigate the developer console interface to streamline your development workflow. And lastly, you will be able to create and manage Apex classes and triggers, essential for enhancing Salesforce functionality. Now for the core concepts, which is the data types and control structures. So first we have the integer data type, which represents whole numbers and is commonly used in calculation. It also has the string data type, which is used to store text values, allowing for manipulation of characters. Next is the Boolean data type that can hold true or false values, essential for control flow. And next is the IF statements or F statements, just conditional statements that execute code based on true or false evaluations. We also have loops, which is the structures that repeat a block of code multiple times until a condition is met. And of course, switch cases, a control structure that allows variable evaluation against multiple cases. So these are some uh, examples of simple Apex code snippets. So we have here the basic SOQL query. So it demonstrates querying Salesforce records using the SOQL syntax. We also have this snippet, which is the simple trigger for update notification. It shows how to create a trigger that sends notifications upon record, record updates. And the looping through Salesforce like records. So it illustrates the process of iterating over records to perform actions in Apex. So for the industry trends and adoption rates, we have this. And for the common challenges for beginners, so the common challenge is first understanding the Salesforce ecosystem. So of course, as a beginner, you must familiarize yourself with Salesforce vast ecosystem, including its architecture and components. Also translating theoretical knowledge to practice. So you need to apply learned concepts in real world scenarios and it can be challenging It requiring practice and experimentation. Next is adapting to evolving trends. So newcomers need to keep up with new features and updates to stay relevant. And of course, mastering Apex syntax and logic structures. So understanding the syntax and logic of Apex programming is crucial for effective coding and problem solving. And these are the resources for further learning. If you need some other resources to learn uh, using Salesforce Apex, you can simply go to their website and they will have this online courses, the Salesforce documentation, community forums, and books and guides. So that's basically all for this video. So if you find this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks.